The four-step method to high performance trading and the seven-step daily routine for high performance traders are both free downloads. The four-step method for high performance trading is about developing the mindset and the routines to increase your competence and your ability to execute your trading edge in a live trading environment. Constant progress. Seven-step daily routine for high performance traders is an audio program download designed to help traders bulletproof their day-to-day habits, discipline, and develop a winning mindset. Again, the link is in the description box below. They're free downloads. Let's get started. Good day, traders. Mindset Reset. It's Wednesday, day three, the midpoint range of the week. Today, we're going to talk about a few things. We're going to answer some questions. We're going to look at a couple of specific trade setup examples from this week. We're going to talk about some specific rinse and repeat characteristics and specific trade examples. And number four, of course, most importantly, behavior of the trader. An excellent question uh, from one of the community members regarding um, a Bitcoin trade that traders took on Monday, uh, just regarding my annotating of the high of week level in my screenshot. Now, we'll go over a couple things just to clarify this. Number one, on a Monday, of course, as we've talked about, trying to find a day three setup, a three-day setup from the playbook. Page 31 in the playbook, this initially caused some confusion for people because uh, I've talked about Monday's always day one, Tuesday's day two, and Wednesday is day three on the front side of the week, but we can have three-day setups. And what a three-day setup is, is, well, if it's a Monday, we count back, and we want to find a peak formation higher low of week on a Thursday, and that can lead us into a Monday parabolic reversal or trend trade opportunity. That's one of the things we'll talk about today is rinse and repeat setups. Rinse and repeat. Finding a day three on a Monday, a three-day template for either a parabolic trend trade or a parabolic reversal trade. Now, we have a market that's formed the low of the week the previous Thursday, starting the day count after Friday closes outside of Thursday's high of day. And I've, I've gone over this repeatedly because there was a lot of confusion and misinformation about calling every breakout pullback a false break. It is not a false break until the other side of a daily level is broken. So remember, other time frames are what this is about. Daily levels, when we have markets that break out of these levels and close and break out, we now have other time frames involved in the market. Larger players, bigger players. So we have this market uh, putting in the low of the week on Thursday. Closing in breakout on Friday, one of the trigger signals to look for over the weekend are markets that close in breakout if we're looking for an opportunity on a Monday to form a day three thesis. Now, how does price behave on the day? We had the market go vertical and break out in Asia. So we have a market that's broken out on a new a new Monday, a new week. We now have a new weekly high. Monday starts the auction process from Friday's closing price. That is where the auction process begins. It breaks out of the high of day made on the weekend, but most importantly, the high of Friday. I ignore the weekends on cryptocurrencies. I ignore the weekends on cryptocurrencies. I don't care what anybody else says. I ignore the weekends on cryptocurrencies because I'm looking for setups based on the Monday to Friday templates. Now, this market breaks out and puts a high of week in place in the new week. This is our new weekly high on a day one, a Monday, because Monday, in the initial auction process, creates the new high and low for the new week. But we also have a breakout pullback continuation setup on our smaller time frame. Now, this is where I talk about building your muscle memory. Now, traders, what does a dump and pump template look like? It dumps down from the high, coils sideways, in the timing window for a parabolic vertical move in the long direction. Now, our basic entry criteria, page 29 in the playbook, page 29, basic model for trade entry criteria. This market coiled sideways right into our U.S. window, 930 New York open, and goes parabolic back through the initial high of week made in the Asian session. Now, where some of the confusion came uh, from from this question from this trader was regarding the other high that I had in place. I labeled that as the high of the week. Now, the reason why I labeled that as the high of the week, because this market closed on Monday in breakout and continued 
to close lower in breakout again on day two. Now, this is what the important part of understanding the initial balance is. The market has closed in breakout, breaks lower again, and closes in breakout on day two. The initial balance, the lower high made on Tuesday, is now the target area on that move coming in the New York session. Now, understand the important part of a market that closes in breakout. If we back this up and we look at Monday, we have Monday closing in breakout as a down day. What that means to me is this, that there are other time frame sellers above that high of day level, but this is also our lower high of week now. So we've made a market close and breakout. We've gone lower. This is the next significant major level in a market that is closed in breakout on Monday, day one. So when we've come back up to this level, the market has reversed and closed back down. And, and uh, I guess the confusion was is where I put the high of week level. But the initial high is made in the Asian session in a new week. Monday is day one in a new week. That establishes the initial high and low heading into the new week. But also understanding where is the money. If you're in that long trade of where you should be looking for that to potentially fail, locking in profits, and on Monday, day one, a nail and bail opportunity for a coiled market on a day three continuation trade, clearing out that level and then reversing and closing back down at the high of day uh, made over the weekend, but most importantly, the next day taking back to Friday's high of day. So that's a really important thing to understand is a new month. We have a high of the month. We have a low of the month. New week starts. We break out. We pull back and they go back to the high of the month made on Tuesday, day two, the previous week. I got this question from uh, a few traders today regarding uh, can I go over and clarify what an outside day is. Uh, we have a couple of examples of that on oil, West Texas. Uh, basically, there are four types of candles. We have a trend day, and that can be either in a long direction or the short direction. And that market typically will have higher highs or lower lows. It doesn't have to close at the extreme, but we can have a trend day either in the long direction or in the short direction. When we have a market that is an inside day, we can have the same thing. It's inside of the previous day's trading range, and that will typically be one of three types of candles. It will be a doji, so open, high, low, close, very similar in terms of their opening close levels. The inside days can be, again, a doji. Uh, we can have a green day, inside day. We can have a red day, inside day. And of course, the outside day, where the high and low of the day completely overtake the previous day's range. Now we have two outside days on the uh, oil chart. Now, interestingly enough, the first outside day forms the low of the month and the second outside day forms our high of the month. Now, the significance often for these markets is they can signify a turning point area, but it is all about where they are in the chart and how does price behave. So we have uh, another component of that is where are we at in the Monday, Wednesday, Friday template? So in this particular case, we start a new month, a new week. We have an inside day on Friday. That market goes parabolic, taking out the low of uh, the week, but also it closed down into the lowest closing price of the month, the lowest closing price of the month. Now, this comes back to me asking the question of what setups are you hunting? Market breaks out, pulls back. We're at the low of the week, the low of the previous week, the lowest close of the month, and we're heading into the US session timing window. This market reversed and gave a beautiful parabolic, a day two parabolic range expansion reversal on the front side of a new week and a new month, the first trading day of the new month, and proceeded to auction higher. This can help us form a thesis now heading into the back side of our week. We get our midpoint range on Wednesday, the coil sideways for the parabolic continuation, a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday continuation where I mentioned to traders. So if we take this area and understand that we have new breakout traders in the markets, US session, we have our reset point, our midpoint range of the week, a reset for the dump and pump higher highs and the continuation on day two on the backside, range reversals, range expansions, and the continuation 
uh, into the close on Friday, a market that closed in breakout. Again, another signal for traders to potentially have this instrument on their watch list on the Monday. We have now a peak formation on our backside, forming our Thursday, Friday, Monday thesis. Several traders hit the day three long continuation, very similar to what we just saw in Bitcoin, a market that breaks out, pulls back and continues. And an example where we engulf, we'll zoom in here, we engulf right off the bat the new day. An example is several traders notated. Selling the close, Paul Tudor Jones, think of your entry point as last night's close. The high of the month, we have three days of breakout traders in the market, in a market that collapses down in Asia and coils sideways. Coils sideways, this is the setup. The true setup for the low hanging fruit continuation in our US session. This is an example of easy money because the traders who shorted up top, uh, although on a smaller time frame they have an excellent opportunity for a parabolic reversal, but the, the low hanging fruit is the easy money. The hard work's already been done. The market's coiling sideways at Friday's high of week breakout level. Where is the money? The money is underneath of those low of day levels where the breakouts occurred on Friday and Monday for an easy parabolic collapse. But just coming back to the question regarding an outside day, an outside day is a day that breaks out of both sides of the range. So we have a market that has broken out at the high of the month. Where is the money initially going to be? It's going to be at the low of the previous day. That reversal creates an outside day. Now that can have two types of scenarios depending on where it shows up. So for example, we're at the high of the month, day three now, this is a day two reversal, which forms our first red day. First red day, page 58. The best part about this first red day setup, we're heading into day three. Day three uh, is gonna offer, if it's set up, two types of possibilities. Reversals are trend trades. Now, Friday's closing price is where the auction process begins from in a new week. That's where we establish our initial high-low boundaries. We're underneath of Friday's closing price now. Train your eyes to move horizontally at the levels. Now, this is a 30-minute chart. So on the smaller time frame, we have our thesis already in place. So we have two types of signals. We have the outside day, similar to the inside day. Those are very powerful signals, depending on where they show up, not only in the month itself, but in the Monday, Wednesday, Friday template. And again, reinforcing, we have essentially four types of bars. We can put pin bars in there as well, but they are effectively a trend bar, opening and closing at one extreme, even though they may be a large range bar. And the significance of these is where they show up in that weekly template. Inside days can signal either a trend continuation or a reversal area when they, especially when they coil tightly and the same applies for an outside day range bar. Parabolic trend trades, the day zero setup, page 84 in the playbook is typically the, the larger ones are three day setups and a one day outside bar or range is no different. Market peak formation high, peak formation low, the coil sideways and the parabolic explosion. We have the day three. So again, understanding where these bars show up in our day count, well, day three coils sideways at closing price and goes parabolic through back into the breakout level from the previous high of week level. They're not overly common, but they show up, uh, you know, with probably once or twice a month. It's interesting that we've had two outside days that have formed our extremes on West Texas oil. Again, a signal day. Uh, whether you follow it the following day, so we've got our, our our Tuesday, Tuesday, and our midpoint range reversal closing still higher than the previous day's close, a market that closed in breakout, coiling sideways, day two on the backside, expanding the range, a trend trade, day one, day two, day three, and continuing into close in breakout on Friday which blows off in our new week. So uh, yesterday we spoke about this. Traders were looking at this as six days. Wednesday's the midpoint range. It's a reset. I start the count over. Day one, day two, day three, blowing off in the direction of the trend on Monday and the reversal, the coil sideways for the easy low-hanging fruit 
reversal trade on day two on the backside after putting in a peak formation high of the month. And one of the reasons I repeat the phrase constantly is what setups are you hunting is because it's important to build your muscle memory. If you're going to hunt first red days, know all the different types of scenarios. Now we had a market that's in breakout and we're looking at a market that had multiple days of breakouts in place. This market gave us a very large reversal day. That's why the low hanging fruit trade is easy because often traders uh, that are in first red days, they look for that. We have a market that's in breakout and they look for that big move the following day. Now, sometimes when a market's reversing, we can have a first red day, a lower low and a little bit of a coil sideways before on the third day having a large range expansion type of opportunity, which is why I keep re encouraging traders to go back and build your muscle memory. So we have another example of pre a few weeks ago, first red day, a broken down market prior to our US session, breaking down in Asia and London inside of the previous week's range and as well as our new week, but that's our first red day. So we have other time frame sellers potentially inside of this area. The market pumps back up on the back side. So we have our range reversal on day two on the front side, range reversal long on day two on the back side, but coiling sideways inside of other time frame sellers underneath the highest close of that week so far, heading into our US session. Other time frame sellers up in this area, how does price behave? A large parabolic collapse on Friday. We'll zoom in on that. So if you master one or two simple setups, whether it's first red day, whether it's first green day, whether it's inside days, whether it's outside days, whether it's reversals after markets break out, whether it's a three day setup, three days of breakout traders in the markets, whether it's a day zero setup, peak formation high on Thursday, peak formation low on Friday, coiling sideways market that closed in breakout on Monday, uh, sorry, heading into Monday for a parabolic collapse on Monday day one, the day zero template. If we're hunting that setup, that's what I'm looking for on a Monday is a market that has formed a peak formation on Thursday. It broke out on Friday. So that's our most recent peak formation heading into Friday is Thursday's high of day. Even though it's an inside day, the market was in breakout, closed in breakout on Wednesday, pulled back into the lower closing price made on Tuesday continued lower on Friday, closed in breakout, but we have our two peak formation highs and our coil sideways into our US window underneath of closing price for a end of three hour window collapse on day one, which is why I keep saying to traders, uh, if you're catching a move and catching a high and catching a low, what is rinse and repeat about that? What is your sizable opportunity? Where are you gonna put size on which trades? Do you know which trades, what days, what setups are gonna be the easiest ones to scale into? As I talked about my friend, Steven, if I said, Steven, send me a picture of, of your five-star all-in opportunity, I know he would have four or five examples of the exact same chart sent to me within about five minutes. Can you do that? Or are you just catching moves each day when you go to the market and trying to grab some pips or catch the high. We're going to talk about behavior of the trader in a second, but specific trade setups that show up again and again and again, whether it's on a Tuesday, whether it's on a Thursday, whether it's on a Friday, which setups are you hunting? They have specific rinse and repeat characteristics. So now we'll talk a little bit about rinse and repeat. What does rinse and repeat mean? Rinse and repeat. Uh, I use Steven as an example, uh, often now same setup he trades markets after they break out or that they've been broken out of same time he does not look at a market for a trade setup until 10 a.m or afterwards he doesn't care what day it is if it's the higher low of the week and that's his rules rinse and repeat he can execute his setups over and over again with a simple model based on this criteria on any instrument now let me kind of clarify uh, that, that doesn't mean that Steven's just blindly trying to sell the high or buy the low. Uh, for example, he may have a market that breaks out and coils back and the reversal may be a trend continuation trade if that setup meets his criteria on the day. Market breaks out. It may have already closed in breakout. It's already closed in breakout. It breaks out again and coils down and 
he recognizes this as a range expansion continuation, he may execute that long. It's reversing the 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 short dump into the high of day level. Coming back to understanding the high of week level may be up somewhere up here. This market's broken out. It's dumping down. 10 a.m. comes and we get a coil. He may be in that move long. Typically, we'll see a market coil inside and break out. And this may be the New York Open, uh, 9.30, 9, 9.45 a.m. There may be major red news. That market may coil 10 a.m., 10.15, break down, 10.30, reverse. But Stephen doesn't go to work until after 10 a.m. Same setup, same time, different days, any instrument, high and low of the week. Rinse and repeat. The same thing can apply for any setup. First red day, first green day. Could be inside days that you're hunting. Uh, and they can show up on different days of the week. So they're significant to where these instruments give our signal days. Our first red day, first green day. Three days of breakout traders in the markets. Have weekly levels been broken? Day zero templates. The only thing that's missing here is your decision to master one or two templates and hunt those out and be patient and willing to sit on your hands until you see your rinse and repeat setups that you've built your muscle memory on through not only live time execution, but also hours of going through these charts to identify the best templates when they set up. Rinse and repeat all have specific characteristics that will show up again and again and again into a parabolic trade setup opportunity. Next thing, we'll just, again, go over behavior of the trader, the mindset and beliefs. Behavior of a trader to not engage in any self-sabotaging behavior, but to also have their process, their day-to-day -day routine of what they're hunting, this, the specific signal and opportunities that they're hunting, the patience and discipline to sit on their hands, the willingness to not engage in any other type of random impulsive 50 50 trading we talk about this uh, in the last few videos but the the daily process is what's key having your potential candidates your signal days setups uh, each day whether you're hunting a reversal a trend trade opportunity uh, narrowing that down to two or three and then looking at which ones are well engineered templates into the timing window if they indeed set up and when they do, executing that setup, shutting it down, walking away, and reviewing the trade setup later. Repeat the same process the next day. Hunting the same high probability trade setups each day, each week, as the weekly template evolves. That's what's important. The most important thing traders should understand in my approach is this. I'm looking for the same setups over and over again. I am not going to the screen each day trying to trade a market. What setup do I have? What day is it? Which instrument is set up the best? Today's Wednesday, day three. What type of instrument is set up the best for a day three setup? If it's a reset day, if it's a reset day, well, it could be a day one template and you're trying to trade it. Let's take a look at a couple of those. This is a one hour gold chart. We'll just look at a couple of examples. To differentiate, we have a market that closed and breakout on Monday, closed and breakout on Tuesday and coil sideways on Wednesday, day three. Now, several traders may be sitting here around closing price, trying to go long, go short, and they get whipsawed and chew their account up when it's actually a day one template heading into the backside of the week. We have a market that closes in breakout, coil sideways, day one. Thursday, lower low on the inside, coiling sideways underneath the highest closing price of the week and going parabolic on day three. So day one is Wednesday, and on Wednesday, even though it's day three on the front side, there's no day three setup. So traders are trying to trade this because it's gold and it's sort of their favorite instrument, and they get chewed up back and forth when it's actually a day one template. So I repeat, I am not trying to trade my favorite instrument every day because it moves. Where's the day three setup when I go to the market on this particular day? And it's obviously not gold because gold, I, I need it to break out again and coil sideways underneath the high for a reversal if I'm looking for that on day three or pull back and coil for a dump and pump parabolic continuation on day three if that is the best candidate. So understand Wednesday is the midpoint range of the week 
And that is also a day. If it's a day one template and people are trying to trade this, they're just trying to trade a, a market because it moves. Where is the setup that you're hunting? A day three setup. What setup are you hunting on Wednesday, day three? Here's another example. We have a market that closes in breakout on Tuesday, day two, reversing from the high of week. The market continues to break down in Asia, giving us lower lows. That's the low hanging fruit continuation trade in London, making another lower low, the pullback, major red news, US first hour, and then the New York collapse going back down through the breakout traders from a few weeks previous, but a day three trend trade blowing off in the direction of the move. Um, Monday's opening range closing in breakout. Tuesday reversing and closing in breakout on the downside, coiling sideways into our London window. Parabolic go off through the low of day and low of week of the current week level into the previous weekly levels, pulling back and continuing down, blowing off in the direction of the trend, the low hanging fruit trend continuation trade. So understand the type of setups that you are hunting and how you are going to execute them, the timing, the levels, the behavior of price. Now, I always ask the question, are you a master of trading whatever is moving or your favorite instruments movement? Now, as I've talked about, there are several members in the community who have mastered certain instruments and specific setups that rinse and repeat for those traders. They have specialized in certain instruments and they look for repeating setups occurring again and again and again. I myself am looking for specific easy money making parabolic trading setups on any instrument. Now there's going to be Mondays, day one, where I'm only going to find one or two that are set up with criteria that I feel I've got a 90-10 edge on. Maybe Tuesday, I'm going to find one that I really feel confident trading on the front side of the week. Often there's going to be two or three. I don't follow all the currencies for every single move. I'm looking for specific setups on the currencies. I'm looking for specific setups on the metals when and if they present certain specific setups on the indexes if and when they present. And sometimes I'm just going to take a nail and bail because that's all I can see on the day. We may have major red news pending on the calendar or a template building into major red news and not seeing the ideal five star candidates play out until maybe the backside of the week. But I'm looking for the same setups over and over and over again based on our signal days keeping it as simple, stress-free, and zero emotion as possible. That's what I do. I don't care what anybody else says, does, or thinks. That's what I do. And there's a reason why I do what I do. I just talked about uh, the behavior of the trader. The most important reason that repeats over and over again for most traders is self-sabotaging behavior. So in order for me to have a simple, reproducible and scalable trading business, I'm just doing the same things over and over and over again. And I've talked about working on things for years, uh, doing more of what works, which is why I focus on the same setups when I can find them and stop doing things that damage your trading business. Random, impulsive, 50-50 taking trades. Taking trades versus executing specific repeating trade setups are two entirely different things. What is your daily process to identify the instruments with the best setup and have you mastered the execution in live time, timings, levels, behavior of price of those specific setups, where to take profits, where to add in, which setups do you add in on? Do you understand which ones are going on range expansions or are they just nail and bail? Or do you do lots of other things too in between? Take other trades, catch moves, grab some pips, catch the high, catch the low. Are you a master of movement trader? I always joke about, you know, Stephen jokes about this with me all the time. Uh, don't start a science project. I don't know how many times traders have sent me screenshots of stuff that I'm looking at the chart and I'm like, I have no idea what what they're talking about. So in closing, traders, keep it simple. Uh, focus on what you understand and what works for you. Keep it simple, repeatable. Master one or two of these setups. Execute, learn how to execute them in live time. Manage yourself away from the screen. Don't engage in impulsive, rational, self-sabotaging behavior. And 
Keep it growing and keep it going. 1% better every single day. Have a great day, traders, and may the markets go with you.